AI and music, controversial topic. Everyone's been talking about AI in the past few years, and there's been a lot of negative backlash over its use in the creative fields. But what if I told you that one of the biggest metal bands today is using AI, but it's not in the way that you expect, and that I managed to recreate the same technology that they are using? Okay, let's wind up a bit. I'll first tell you how I discovered that Avenged Sevenfold was using artificial intelligence. So a few months ago, Avenge did a concert in Vienna, France, just outside of Lyon. Just as a small parenthesis, this concert was insane, because it wasn't held at your typical venue or stadium. This time, it was held in an antique Roman amphitheater. I'll just leave you with some pictures. Anyway, I was there with a few friends, and I noticed that the images that were being projected on stage had a slight delay as to what I was seeing live. I mean, if M. Shadows raised his fist in Hell to the King, the image would be delayed by a few seconds. So that immediately sparked my curiosity in the middle of the concert. I mean, why? Current technology should allow for almost immediate streaming. That's until I looked a bit closer at the images that were being projected. That's when I saw that his image was slightly modified. I mean, sometimes he had devil horns, sometimes he was a zombie, sometimes he had a skull over his face, but it was not a filter because you could see that the image were flickering constantly and changing all the time. That's when I remembered those generative AI images that you used to see on TikTok or Instagram of things evolving from something into something else. I'll leave some examples here. So I immediately knew that Avenge was using some type of generative AI technology, but one which they could clearly prompt how they wanted the images to be modified and be rendered in almost real time with the minor delay I was talking about. So after the concert, I went out and did some digging as to what kind of technology they were using. And as it turns out, they've been using it for the past few years. And while everyone seems to be amazed by the images, nobody's talking about it. I found out that Avenge was working with The Hive, a company specialized on providing creative solutions for live events. They have worked on the screens for artists such as Lady Gaga, Gorillaz, Beyonce, and Aerosmith and they have also worked on awards such as the MTV EMAs and the Breed Awards. I tried reaching out to them to get an interview to understand how this technology works and how Avenge got the idea for these visuals, but it was really hard to get a hold of them. However, after a bit of research, I did manage to find some information on this technology, Avenged view on AI, and I even managed to recreate it myself. But before I show you that, let's first see what they think of Gen AI. Basis Johnny Christ said on his YouTube channel that they started using this technology around 2024, and the first concert they used it in was in Connecticut. There's an AI technology that we've implemented on it where it shifts, um, you put in keywords and stuff, and like a filter, but it's it's through keywords and it changes everything. So it's 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 yeah. a live AI filtering basically. Um, you it's the first time to my knowledge it's ever been done. Um, and uh, it looks amazing. So they put in keywords like, I don't know, for instance, when we're doing Shepherd of Fire, talking about the devil, you put in devil and like it'll go to Matt and he'll shapeshift basically into like this devil thing and back and forth and stuff like that. And like a bunch of different versions of it. It's not just here's one filter of the devil and it's Matt with some stupid fucking horns. It's like it literally molds everything around it. It's very, it's, very it's cool. Badass. So we know it's definitely AI and not some Snapchat filter because they're prompting the images that they want. But he does tell us a bit more. It can, that, that machine crashed and we had to get a new one out. So there was a few shows that we didn't have it um, and, uh, right after, but and then we dialed it in so that it wasn't like, we were testing it out in Mohegan. It was a little overboard, but then like by the, the, the next few times it was being used perfectly. You know, you go out to the crowd and you see, you, the crowd's like looking up at these screens and they're seeing themselves like they normally would at a concert, like singing along going like, yeah, awesome, awesome. And they see that they're on the screen, so they look at the camera and then the screen changes and we put in zombie and the whole crowd looks like a bunch of zombies going crazy. Uh, it's yeah. fucking sick. So we know this tool is really resource dependent, but it's not surprising because we're rendering images with almost no delay. So after scrolling around through Reddit, I found some people explaining how to do this with stable diffusion which for those who don't know, it's an AI model that generates images from a text prompt using a process called latent diffusion. And what it does is that it gradually transforms random noise into coherent visuals. So after playing around with some software and code, I managed to create this. 
And as you can see, I can feed my live video directly into this pipeline, which will eventually enter this stable diffusion node. Here, I can prompt exactly what I want the model to transform the image into. So right now, I have set it up to transform my image into some kind of skeleton with horns. We can see that my image start being transformed live. And if I do different poses, he tries to imitate them with the respective filter. I can even modify the intensity so that the AI filter keeps more of the original image. Here I'm trying again, but with a zombie filter, just like they do on the live concert. And of course, my project is kind of small and it's not perfect. Even though I have a pretty good computer with a decent graphics card, I still have a huge delay, and the model I use is not necessarily the same one that they use. But it's good enough to show the basics behind it. And if you're interested, I'll leave you some links and videos in the description if you want to recreate it yourself. But now the question is, how have the fans received this? And what's the future for both the live industry and events themselves? Opinions on Reddit are, as always, mixed. Some people really like the visuals. They love how they add a new layer to the concert and they really like that Avenge is trying these new kinds of technology. While others, they see them as cheap, gimmicky and a bit distracting on the concert itself. But I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And as for the band themselves, we already know that Johnny is a big fan from the podcast snippets. And I believe M Shadows would be a huge fan as well. On previous interviews, he has already said that he's really interested on AI technologies. He even envisions selling his likelihood to let other people use his voice and then share royalties with them. And I also think it'd be cooler if the artist was letting the voice be used and letting people create songs that sound like you, but splitting the royalties with them. You did the work, you prompted this thing, you found it, give me 50% for my likeness, right? Now it gets weird when you go like, well, mix it with Axl Rose's voice and M Shadow's voice and Lane Staley's voice and make it sound Alice in Chains, maybe Soundgarden, means those are weird things, right? He has even talked about letting AI tools help him write his music. I think there's a bunch of cool use cases. If you're writing a story, if you're writing lyrics, if you're writing a novel, if you're writing a newspaper article, and you prompt AI at this point in the right way, you will find tidbits of how they wrote it. You give, give me 20 options here. Give me 20 of that picture. And I go, oh, that's interesting. Well, how do I take that and go somewhere else with it? Yes. That's using creativity 20x what you can do, because what are we doing anyways? I listen to Mozart, I listen to Guns N' Roses, I listen to Pink Floyd, I listen to Die Outward, I listen to Tenacious D. I'm taking this database, but I physically don't know how to bring these things up quick enough to really see the full spectrum of what I've been inputted. AI will help us right there, show us the, the greater you know collection of data in this world. So. But I guess that's yet another topic, using AI to create music itself. Let me know if you'd be down to see another video about that. On my side, here's what I think. Regarding the visuals in the concert, I personally really enjoyed them. I felt they added a new layer to the concert itself. I also like how Avenge is experimenting with new technologies while also delivering on what is expected from them. I didn't feel that the images were invasive because they were not on all the time. And when they were on, it's really cool to see what they were doing. So I'd love to see where this technology goes next and how Avenge evolves with it. But regarding the use of AI to generate music itself, like M Shadow said on his interview, that's another can of worms I don't want to get into right now. I'm not against using Gen AI tools for inspiration. However, using AI to generate music directly does not vibe with me right now. It's a really sensitive topic. Not only was music, video, images, and text used without consent to train models, but using AI to generate music itself removes the whole human aspect about it. But I know there are more versed people on this topic on YouTube, so I'll just stop yapping about it now. So I guess I'll just leave you with another one of my videos where I deep dive into the story of an album or a song and also my original music. Don't forget to check it out, subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you guys on the next video.